So what is red teaming? What is hacking? What is pen testing? Today we're going to be talking about the differences between pen testing, red teaming, and ethical hacking. So lately online, I've seen a lot of videos, a lot of articles talking about red teaming. And I understand that for most people coming into cybersecurity for the first time, it can be a little bit overwhelming. So today we're actually gonna be explaining the differences between pen testing and red teaming. So let's divide it into three categories. You have red teaming, you have ethical hacking, and you have pen testing. Think of it as a tree, where red teaming is on top, ethical hacking is in the middle, and pen testing is at the bottom. So pen testing or a penetration tester, the role is to try to penetrate something, not the way you're thinking. It could be either a web application, a server, a mobile device, full blown network of a client. So pen testing is the process of pretty much scanning and attacking whatever you have as a target in order to infiltrate and compromise it, to penetrate it, right? So pen testing follows under one of the tasks of an ethical hacker. An ethical hacker not only pen tests, an ethical hacker can also perform OSINT phishing. An ethical hacker can attack wireless devices, Bluetooth. So some people could say that a pen tester is the same as an ethical hacker. You could say so, yes. So then what is red teaming? So ethical hacking is pretty much anything that you can perform from behind a computer, right? So red teaming takes it to another level. Red teaming is ethical hacking, but also adds the element of social engineering and physical security. When you combine the three of them, that's when you get red teaming. Let's take this hypothetical scenario. Let's say that you are an advanced ethical hacker sponsored by the government, and you're hired to attack a nuclear facility. And let's say that you have a scope of six months to compromise them, and you have a team of 20 of the most elite hackers. Excellent, right? But what if that target that you're trying to attack has only one single public IP or even no IP and they have nothing facing the internet? So how do you attack them? Well, that's where red teaming comes in. You're supposed to gather your team, go on prem and try to covertly infiltrate. So here's the thing, a red team is supposed to go above and beyond. A red team is always supposed to think outside the box because not all compromise happen from behind a computer. You have to think of other ways of how, how to infiltrate your target, right? So you have to go on site, you have to do lock picking, you have to do social engineering, you have to do physical security bypasses in order for you to infiltrate the nuclear power plant, implant your bugs or your payloads, exfiltrate your information and do what you have to do. So the key differences between an, an ethical hacker or a pen tester and a red teamer is that the ethical hacker does everything from behind the computer. The red teamer actually involves as well social engineering, but not just emails. You're actually supposed to go on site and impersonate as an employee or, or someone else trying to infiltrate wherever you're trying to get into. As well as physical security and try to bypass the locks or do lock picking or bypass any other security measures that they may have established in place. Story time. So one time, Years back, I had an engagement where I had to compromise our Wi-Fi. Their office was located in a very tall skyscraper. In order for me to be able to reach a certain proximity to their Wi-Fi to try to hack it, I had to get into the building. Turns out that at the first floor of the building, there was security guard, so it's gonna be pretty difficult to soldier engineer my way to get to that floor. Well, it turns out that the skyscraper was located in an area where they were across the lake, and across the lake, there was a little park. So instead of dressing up and doing social engineering into the building, it was just easier to pick up some coffee, get my cantana, and sit across the lake at the park and pop their Wi-Fi from a half a mile away. So that's pretty much what red teaming is about. Like you have to think outside the box because it's not only from behind a computer, like there's also social engineering and the physical element. Uh, sometimes your clients can spend thousands of dollars into uh, cybersecurity appliances and it's pretty much impossible to reach them through the network but it turns out that they're just using a couple of master locks to protect their servers which you could just pick open and walk right in as if you own the place there are a lot of really good hackers out there but it turns out if you have nothing to attack what else are you gonna do you have to go physically right so 
The ethical hacker pretty much does everything from behind the computer, but a red team actually has a lot of tools. Um, a lot of tools for physical cover entry, tools for social engineering, as well as implant devices. For example, your key loggers, your malicious USBs, and other man in the metal devices. Also to mention the Wi-Fi pineapple, which if you're able to leave covertly, you can actually access remotely and do your wireless engagement completely remote. An ethical hacker performs everything from behind a computer. A red teamer performs everything a hacker does, but also includes social engineering and physical security. An ethical hacker only needs a laptop. A red teamer needs a whole lot of tools. An ethical hacker can hack from pretty much virtually anywhere. A red teamer actually has to go on-prem and do social engineering and physical security as well. The scope of an ethical hacker is pretty much anything they can see from the internet. The scope of a red teamer goes anything that they can see from the internet as well as anything they can see physically on the facility. An ethical hacker can wear whatever clothes he wants to. A red teamer, if performing social engineering, must actually dress accordingly to the environment that they're trying to infiltrate. An ethical hacker doesn't require any soft skills. As a red teamer in performing social engineering, one must require to have certain level of degree of experience. So in essence, what an ethical hacker does is that it scans for its target, finds any exploits or any weaknesses or vulnerabilities, exploits them with the goal of trying to get in, right? So red teamer does similar to that, but not only through the internet, but the scope actually varies, which also includes the physical security and the human element, which is social engineering. So important to note the key differences is that for example, an ethical hacker, if they can't see anything on the internet to attack, they're not gonna be able to get in. As a red teamer, if you don't see anything online, that's when you move to physical security and social engineering. So today was pretty much a short video, just an explainer between the differences of ethical hacking or pen testing and red teaming. If you liked the video, go ahead and smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.